Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life Junk Journal Happiness Paper Fanatical. Let's recycle, let's have fun, let's use real, authentic ephemera and get our little fingers full of glue. I am just so excited about junk journaling. I know it's like so weird. I don't know why I am so into this, but I'm glad that I am. One, I love recycling. Um, two, I absolutely detest clutter. Three, I love antique and vintage items. And number four, I'm always looking to upgrade. And the things that I downgrade are either given away um, to someone else who also, you know, will use them. They are donated. And in some cases, some items are sold. So this actually allows me to take items that I would, you know, not really use or know what to do with and give them new life, you know, in a great, fun, loving Frankenstein kind of way. So in front of you, what you see are some of the things that I recently created and I wanted to share some of those with you guys. Um, I'm not going to show you how I made them, but we can talk about, um, you know, some of the elements that went into them and all of the items that you see on this table were created within approximately, I'm going to say three hours. So I made all of this stuff within about three hours. Plus there are a few items that are not on the table that I also made. I'm going to say probably five or six of those that I also made that are not here. And the reason they're not here is honestly, I can't show you everything. Like I only could fit so much into this picture. So without further ado, let's get going. Um, so one of the things that I was looking at is when you finish using up tape, such as I'm just going to say washi tape, for example, you end up being left with a little circular cardboard thingies. Um, and obviously you can get these in, like in bigger rolls as well. And one of the cool things I think is to use them as almost like a frame. So what I did with this one is I colored it inside with a metallic gold marker and I cut this out from a vintage rock and roll magazine. It says you rock and I'll roll. And then what I did is the little cardboard circle already had these stripes, um, sort of like a candy stripe and hello, purple, hey, purple. Um, and what I did is I used another metallic marker, which was much lighter in color because this was pure white, which was very boring. So to just give it a little life, I actually colored over that roughly the white ones, the white stripes. Sounds like the name of an amazing band, doesn't it? The White Stripes, because it is. And then I took a permanent marker and I also colorized um, this outer rim of the, the cardboard circle. Because if I didn't, it would have just have been the color of brown cardboard. And the back is what it is. And then I also, one of the things I've been doing is using like a black permanent marker or any other color, brown, blue, green, it doesn't matter, whatever you want. And I've been going around the outside of paper that I cut out to use for projects. Um, because if you don't, then this would look white. Um, and so this now can be used in a lookbook. Um, a junk journal, all you have to do is glue this down or you could even put a hole in it, put a ribbon or a thong or whatever you want through this. I have some hemp thong that I use and you can have it just dangle. Um, there's like a lot of things you could do with this. You could obviously put something inside the circle besides this. You can also use this almost as a picture frame. 
So when you're looking at, you know, those things, there are other things that you could do with them. It almost reminds me of a coaster, but it's not coaster approved. The other thing I love, I love these, are when you get library books that have been dis, uh, you know, put into the discard pile. Um, they've been decommissioned from library duty is you can simply take and cut them, cut them out of the book. Um, and then, you know, go crazy with these. You could decorate them more. I like them pure. I pretty much like them just like this. Cut them out. Um, I, you know, to tidy them up, I did, of course, use my little corner thing just to give them, you know, a little bit of curve on the corners. Um, but I love, you know, the fact that they're already stamped, you know, people have written on them, you know, the old book, you know, title is there, etc. It even tells you where it came from. You can act, you know, these are great pockets. They're already made. So, you know, I think they're awesome. You could put, you know, a hole here in the middle, punch a hole, add, you know, some string, some ribbon, whatever. I mean, you could go wild with these. You can make them so that they're like the cover to something so you can create like you know i like making what i call my little raggedy notebooks um or little notepads so you can make those out of a bunch of scrap paper attach you know that to this and this could be your front cover etc there's like so many things you could do with these just put them in a book so that if you wanted somewhere for storage you could put the uh, flap on the back of this so that it's like an over the page deal lots of options with these and I see you know a lot of people sort of skipping over them there's no need no need honestly to buy anything to create your own junk journal lookbooks or to add items to a book that you purchased because if you, I know there are people there like, oh, I'm not creative. Honestly, this was like three hours and I'm probably stretching because in between that, I took the dog out. I had a beverage. I actually made a cup of tea. I then went later and got a bottle of water. Like I, it probably only took me, I'll even say two and a half hours to make this, but in total, with all the breaks and answering phone calls and stuff like that, I'm just stretching it out to three hours. And this is stuff that I went through my own craft stuff that I have, um, things that I've gotten from projects, etc. And I've gone through and put all of this stuff together, organized it. And whenever I'm in the mood, I have my project box that I take, go around, collect some stuff, put it together, sit at the table, and you end up with this. So you are creative. You're way more creative than you think. The fact that you wake up every day is probably something to do with creativity. So here we have this is like, I think, one of my cute little, um, I don't know what to call this because it has so many parts to it. You can tuck, you can, you know, use it as, you know, something where I could just put something here and sort of tie it in. You obviously have the storage pocket as well. But like I said, lots of places to just, you know, you could write in here also. You could use this for writing. So I don't know. I guess I'll call this my multi-purpose um is this? Oh, nope, it's not coming off. I thought this was coming off this washi tape, but it isn't. Um, but yeah, there's like so many things that you can do with just this. And so with this, um, I have it so that you could tie it by wrapping it, as you saw, around the button and just pull it down lightly. This came from some silk flowers that we had that I was going to donate, but then I didn't donate it because I was like, whoa, I'm into creating these projects now and I could definitely use those flowers and there's a great variety of them. So when you're picking out like silk flowers to work with, I think variety is key. Variety and making sure the flowers don't look cheesy or cheap. 
um, and you can get them honestly like go to a tag sale people probably will throw them at you the only thing is make sure that they're not dusty um, because you don't know what could have been living in there if the people have cats or animals like they don't smell etc etc I actually purchased a wreath of flowers like I'm going to say it was decades ago you guys and I had it in our uh, mechanical room for who knows 10 10 years at least and I was going to donate it and I was like whoa I can actually now use those flowers so I'm glad I you know thought about that but anyway with this what I did is I did a lot of cutting so these are like this is cut out from an old magazine washi tape going here obviously I talked about that this is a button I sewed it through I actually I use watercolor uh, so I know people are like use tea use coffee use I don't know shoe polish whatever um, you really don't have to if you have a decent watercolor which is they're really inexpensive you guys just make sure they're watercolors um, you can even use watercolor pens um, or markers to kind of get you know the effect of you know this has been beat up a little bit and that's what I use or just to highlight and that's what I did with some highlighting I use my fancy scissors just to do a little bit of you know fancy scissor work and then when you open it um, no need to hide what you did your work is your work I just folded this over glued it down you can see where I sewed through you can see these little bits and bobs point I, I don't mind that at all I think it adds character this um, especially what does it say especially handmade by and you could write your name here if you wanted to but regardless you could write anywhere you want on this because that's part of the purpose and more this actually was cut out from a children's book this is cut out from another book obviously that repeat of washi tape and I also did some decorative cutting here with the scissor the other thing I did of course is I you know sewed this through but I also and this is embroidery I love using embroidery thread for this because one of the things I find when you go to like tag sales or flea markets people they're not really like selling thread as much as they are embroidery thread so you might not find standard sewing thread but usually you can find embroidery thread and it's very strong it's multiple ply so this is maybe like I don't know six pieces of embroidery thread that I you know used to create this little piece and then I knotted it every so often just to give it you know some sort of texture and feel and also more washi tape I I wrote the words here with a permanent marker found this great dog in a book he's so cute and he had to be part of the, the process and then just this like stamp thing which actually came out of a children's book as well and you end up with something like this so lots of storage but lots of places you could write places you could tuck items and oh this brown thing is just an old brown envelope that you know we had and no one was going to ever use it so now it's been used what else can I show you oh I have to show you the boot I love this boot um so this is actually a cutout from an antique and collectibles hardcover book it was a picture that was in the book um, that book was also decommissioned or discarded by the library so hey it found a new home husband thank you for picking that one out so what I did is I cut the boot out I attached it to this is actually paper from said book um, and I love this so when you like get books that inside and back like empty sheet of paper it's always like stronger like a card stock and sometimes you'll it'll even be made with cotton and a paper pulp I always recover those sheets because I can always use them and they're always so strong 
So what I did is I cut that out and I, you know, added, I sort of folded it in half. And I added this little flap so that I can actually tuck it into a belly band in my book, which I plan on doing. And I love boots, so those of you that know me will know that, and this will be going in my own personal book. And then what I did is decided, instead of just having it be the shape of the boot, is I did add this border and I used a permanent black marker just to black out the color of the paper. And I also went around the edge of this boot with that same permanent marker so that the whiteness of the paper when you cut it out, like I left a little example right there, you want to cover that, it won't show as you can see if you go over that with a black permanent magic marker. And this is what I ended up with. And what is the purpose of this? This is so that I can use it as a tuck. So look at that. And I just love it. I just, this is one of my favorite things. Love it. Awesome. Um, what else can I show you here? Ooh, I have um, a book that had a bunch of cards in it because it was showing advertisements. So what I did is, and this, and this is once again another book that was just going to be thrown away. And what I did is recovered that book. I cut out all the pages because all of the pages had beautiful vintage cards in it that look like this or even better and some were plainer some were black and white obviously and what I did is to shore up the strength of it I used that paper from a discarded book and in that front or back page and I actually use that to give like it's almost cardboard strength and then I did do a decorative cut on the corners glued it down using my favorite type of glue and this is what I ended up with so you could put a hole in this if you wanted to I'm not going to because I don't want to ruin the words but this can just you know be tucked into a place like a windowed um, cellophane envelope and this would be the picture that you would see through it um, you can use it as a bookmark you can use it as whatever you want obviously hello real estate you can write on the back of this so lots of things that you can do if you sort of like think about like look at things and look at them differently and think about you know how you can use them in a different type of way so this is another favorite of mine. I plan on making this the front of something so that when you open it up, it's almost like opening the cabinet, like a hidden cabinet. Um, the cabinet door is already open as you can see. And then the other thing is this clock, um, which is really a watch that flips open and you have a little area there where you can write and this was something that I cut out, out of something else and um, glued it on here. But when you cut, just, you know, be mindful that your cuts are very neat and tidy. And as you can see, I once again, I colored the edges so that when you cut the paper out, you don't see that white from the paper. Um, it's all about the details, you know, like the little things. And then just being, look how precise I was in cutting this. So when you put this in your book, it's just going to look amazing. And it also has almost like a 3D effect. And also that clock moves a little bit. So once again, more of a 3D effect. And also try to use things in a, not, like I said, a non-traditional way. So pe some people would look at that and say, but it's a watch. It's like, but why can't it be a clock? So there you go. Actually in the 80s, they did something like that. So this is, I don't know what to call this except for like a cluster envelope. So this would sort of be like if you were someone who created samples, which I have, look at that. This I think was, um, this is from the 1800s or 1700s. This is not an actual sample. It is a picture of an antique sample. But when I create things like this, it sort of reminds me of that genre because here you have a little bit of everything. 
you have a little bit of highlighting, you have some washi tape, you have some cutouts, some ripouts, you have stamps, you have sewing here on the edge. Of course, you have an envelope, a Chiquita Banana um, sticker, which actually came from Chiquita Bananas. You have this color swatch here. The list goes on. So I that and also you have the window in the envelope as well. So I love these because it just shows a variety of things that you can actually do with something so simple. Like with your kids, this is a gr or grandchildren, or if you're a teacher, or even if you are, you know, in the corporate world and you're trying to come up with a unity type project, stuff like this I think is really interesting and also you know, it teaches you something as you go through it about recycling. So on the back, I actually added also, because I was greedy like that, I added a belly band. I added this beautiful piece of balsa wood that's been like pierced, but also has that little burnt design in it. And I actually left this rough just like that. A lot of people would cover up where the envelope was opened. I decided, ah, eh, it adds character, not gonna do it. And in here I added a little bit of yellow so that when you open the, this flap, which you can actually use to sew in as a signature, or you might even be able to attach, I don't think it's long, like long enough this way or wide enough, I should say. It's not wide enough really to sort of tuck into a belly band but you could definitely sew this in as a signature or with other things. But I also like that little peekaboo of yellow as a surprise. So that's one of the things that, and also when I went around the edge of this one, this time I used a metallic marker, I purposely put like little waves. Like everything doesn't have to be, you know, a straight line and the word development, I think kind of says it all honestly killing it and shine girl are really not my personality um i believe in shining but <laughs> like these words are really weird but i was like it needed a little bit of flash so that's why that's there so i don't know this is just one of my favorites and also notice that this is not a white envelope it's a brown one um so when you get your junk mail or your non-junk mail in the post or in you know, from your post office, think about, you know, how you can use those envelopes without, and I, I'm very selective. Like I will not keep every envelope. I am looking for envelopes of a particular size and character. So here's another envelope that I created with like a cluster of items. This one I made a little more simple because I want to show you that you don't have to have fancy washi tape, you don't have to eat bananas, you don't have to have a metallic marker, even though I did metallicize some of this, you don't need the balsa wood. Oh, and also when I did this one, you can see like the stitching that I put in and I actually sort of knotted this down and then I added beads and then knotted those on there as well. And what I do is I did dip these in a fabric glue so that they're they're not going anywhere they're just not going anywhere and purposely put two different ones on each side so this one you could see I did not go flash and you know put everything but the kitchen sink into it but I think it's just as effective um underneath I did add this decorative candy cane stripe paper so that when you know even if you have nothing in this envelope you still have this decorative backing cut these out from other paper put them on as corners why do you always have to have four corners you don't you can have two corners it's fine um you could have one corner if you want to and as a matter of fact I'm fine how are you um, <laughs> I know, this is so weird. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, some things that I cut out, you know, more little cutouts, little snippets here and there. This I actually use for our business. We have these fragile stickers and I was like, you know what? I'm going to put a fragile sticker on there. I'm not going to cover up all of the post office markings. Like, why? I think those are very cool, but you can also cover them up if you want. And then this is from a motorcycle parts poster, which I deconstructed, and I use that as the back. 
to this. And also, yes, this is here because you could sew this in as a signature. And, I don't, yep, you enter the envelope this way. So, you know, it's whatever floats your boat and makes you happy is what you should do. And like I said, my whole idea of this entire world of junk journaling and creativity, etc., is that, you know, do you can do this like without buying anything fancy from anywhere. You could you have this stuff at home or you can get it for free. And so talk to your relatives. I'm sure they have some stuff. So here what I have is another envelope full of fantastical elements. And yes, what you see is a paint sample swatch from a magazine that I had. This is actually cardboard. Um, it was from a Brazilian paint sample magazine. Please don't ask, I know. It's, um, and here I have a little brad here in the center to use as like my, instead of actually using a button, you can use brads and other things. And I actually have this scrap. This paper should be familiar. I've used it in this project and I just showed you. And then I actually put it here as well. Um, just, you know, because I do like to have a little bit of continuity, even though there seems as if, you know, there's madness going on. And then I actually used a watercolor marker just to add a little bit of yellow here and there. And once again, why cover this? I didn't cover it. And I had other little scraps, bits and bobs that I used here. This is a satin material. This is obviously a playing card. This is from Clarks and Coats from some pearl cotton string that I had. This is a cutout actually from a Julia Child collection. Oh, may she rest in much, much glory. And then here, once again, we see these little tickets all over the place. But what I did is I put one here upside down on purpose. And then I put one here turned backwards so that you can actually fill in your name and address and phone number if you want to. And this is a piece of material and it actually has wire on the left and right side because it's like a fancy, fancy ribbon. This, I cut out the words, I put them down there. This came from an antique magazine. The, these um, skeleton and railroad keys and inside the envelope I just did a little coloration and this envelope came just like this with these fancy stripes around the edge so I didn't have to do anything to that. Then you flip it over and we're not done yet and I have a token, one of those like little fancy gems that you get um, and this actually came from a piece of broken costume jewelry. This came, this is actually something that came from a magazine. I cut it out um, because I like the sentiment. And of course, home, sweet home. I actually, yes, used some Velcro. This is from a magazine. This is a paint sample. Do not go to your local paint store and suddenly take all of their paint samples. These are samples we already had that I was actually going to throw away. And I was like, wait a minute. And I only had like six or seven of them. And I was like, I could use those. And once again, some more yellow highlighting. And look at, this is a nice big storage pocket. And yes, you can write on all of this. So I know I keep saying that, but I do feel as if sometimes people are afraid to just, I mean, these are for journals. Um, so hopefully you're actually using them, you're writing in them, you're enjoying them, you're using them. Let's look at this one next. Um, brave and be, be brave and be yourself. So a nice sentiment. Um, this came from fancy paper that I have. And I just went a little bit wild with this lace that has sort of this Aurora Borealis effect to it. And I highlighted it by using a planar lace. And, you know, this is simply a pocket. You can either glue it on. You could keep it just like this. You know, use it. You can actually use this as a gift envelope if you want to. And you don't want to make it part of your journal. And here we have this ginormous pocket. Now, I was trying to be very inventive with this particular pocket. Um... 
So what I did is, or I'll tell you what my purpose was, was a couple things. One, I wanted to make it so that it didn't have to be permanently attached to the book. You can actually remove it and you could use it as it is. Or you could put things in it and put it back into the book, but make sure that it's secure enough so it doesn't fall out. So what I did to decorate it, first of all, is um, from that same, an that antique book, I'm telling you guys, wow, what a source as far as like getting some really cool pictures and graphics for projects like this. I must have recovered... I'm going to say over a hundred different like full page items, part like you know things that I cut out because I had like six pictures on a page, etc. And that wasn't all of it. There was still a ton of stuff left in that book that I that just wasn't my vibe. Like I would never use. So anyway, I cut this out of same said book and. I actually put lace up and down the left and right hand side and all of this was attached to this neon green crazy colored almost a sart uh, sartreuse is that the color envelope I know two things that seem like they just don't go together but that's one of the things I like I like you know the doing the unexpected someone would assume that this was going to be you know a softly colored envelope or a white envelope or maybe a black or brown envelope but no I went you know color wild and then what I did is I sewed this 